Back in March of 2020, GM unveiled their new Ultium battery technology, and Tesla unveiled their new 4680 battery technology in September of 2020. Now that both of these batteries are actually in production, how do they really compare? I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watt. First of all, before I dive into today's video, I just wanted to say a special thank you once again to my Patreon supporters whose monthly support really helps make these videos possible. And I don't just say that, but you know, it's hard to rely on just uh, ad revenue alone when it comes to being a content provider. And a lot of work goes into each one of these videos, a lot of hours of research, a lot of editing and a lot of filming goes into creating these videos. And uh, being able to rely on a little bit of Patreon uh, support every month does make a big difference and helps me be able to create these videos. And if you'd like to help uh, me create videos and continue to do this, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I have put a link to that in the video description and you can find out more about supporting my work. While General Motors may not be leading the EV revolution like some may want you to believe, um, they are making large investments in their EV future, including multiple US-based battery cell gigafactories. Several years ago, GM and LG founded a separate 50-50 joint company named Ultium Cells LLC, which is building the new Ultium battery cells found in GM's newest and next generation electric vehicles. The first cell factory, which is located in Ohio, was recently completed and started limited production in May of 2022. And then more recently, they were able to move to series production at this factory. And apparently when fully ramped up, the goal for this factory is to produce somewhere around 40 plus gigawatt hours of batteries per year. However, beyond just the Ohio battery factory, they also have two to three more battery factories in the works. The location of their second factory is Spring Hill, Tennessee, and that factory should be complete by the end of 2023. The third factory location is in Lansing, Michigan, and they plan to be able to complete that factory by the end of 2024. When it comes to a fourth factory location, while decisions are still being made and nothing is final right the moment, very likely a fourth battery factory will be built in New Carlisle, Indiana. And assuming that this project gets green lighted, they could begin production at this fourth battery location sometime by the end of 2025. So as you can see, there is a lot of investment being made um, to provide these batteries for GM's future vehicles. And I don't know if all these factories will have the same capacity, but assuming that each one is indeed able to produce somewhere around 40 gigawatt hours of batteries per year when fully ramped up, um, here's a rough estimation of what GM's battery supply could look like in the coming years. So as you can see, if everything goes to plan, according to my estimates and assuming that each one of these factories can produce 40 gigawatt hours of batteries per year, it's very possible by the year 2026 or so that GM would have access to around 160 gigawatt hours of Ultium cells per year. Even if you mix in some of these trucks with bigger battery packs and some uh, vehicles with smaller battery packs, it still appears like they should be able to build with this kind of battery supply somewhere around 1 million electric vehicles per year if they're able to achieve 160 gigawatt hours of batteries per year by around 2026. When it comes to Tesla, they had originally hoped to produce around 100 gigawatt hours of 4680 batteries in 2022. But of course, as you know, as we near the end of 2022, that's not going to be the case. Between Tesla's pilot facility, Gigafactory Texas and Gigafactory Berlin, I believe it's very possible that by the end of 2023, Tesla could reach a run rate of around 100 gigawatt hours of batteries being produced per year. This of course is just the beginning of Tesla's battery production plans because they're also aiming to produce around three terawatt hours of 4680 batteries per year by 2030. Now, of course the question is, will Tesla actually be able to meet these goals? Because it's one thing to set a very large goal and it's a whole other thing to be able to meet that goal. But at the end of the day, even if Tesla does hit these goals a little late and it takes them a few extra years, in the foreseeable future, when you look at everything just objectively, it sure appears like Tesla is going to far outpace the GM Ultium battery cell production with their own 4680 battery cell production, at least in the foreseeable future. Now beyond battery factories and battery production numbers, let's move over to the battery technologies themselves and see how they compare, starting with the battery cell format. 
Commercial lithium ion batteries are generally available in three basic form factors, cylindrical, pouch, and prismatic. While Tesla has chosen to go with a large 46 millimeter by 80 millimeter cylindrical cell, GM has decided to go with a pouch cell format for their Ultium batteries. These Ultium pouch shells measure approximately 23 inches long by four inches wide, and each one of these battery cells weighs around three pounds. When it comes to a cell level energy density comparison between these batteries, based on data from various sources that I've talked about in the past, the cell level energy density of the 4680 battery cell is likely somewhere between 260.6 watt hours per kilogram up to somewhere close to 300 watt hours per kilogram. When it comes to estimating the cell level energy density numbers for the Ultium battery cells, we can use information from this March 2022 Motor Trend article, which states that each Ultium cell stores 0.37 kilowatt hours of energy. And since we know that these cells weigh approximately three pounds, we can estimate that the cell level energy density is around 272 watt hours per kilogram. More importantly though, moving over to pack level energy density numbers, which are really a great way to see how efficiently a manufacturer can package these battery cells into a battery pack. With GM's new Ultium battery cells and their Ultium platform, GM still utilizes a cell to module to pack design and each module contains 24 individual Ultium pouch cells. And one of the big benefits and one of the reasons why GM has gone with this module design and this more modular approach is because it allows them to package these battery modules into a variety of different pack sizes, depending on the size and desired range of the electric vehicle. For instance, a battery pack with six of these modules would have roughly a 50 kilowatt hour pack, a pack with 12 modules would have a roughly 100 kilowatt hour pack, and a double stacked 24 module pack could have a capacity somewhere around 200 kilowatt hours like the Hummer EV. So having this ability to use that same battery module in a big, huge Hummer EV and also a smaller SUV, being able to universally use that same module, it of course has some benefits when it comes to uh, manufacturing simplicity. But of course, there is a trade off to this cell to module to pack design. And that really comes to a little bit less efficiency in the packing design, which will lower the pack level energy density numbers. So as I just mentioned, according to my estimates, the cell level energy density of these Ultium batteries is around 272 watt hours per kilogram. However, when you pack those into a battery pack, that number goes down substantially. For instance, the Cadillac Lyric, which is built on the Ultium platform, according to an official EPA document with its 102 kilowatt hour battery pack, at the pack level has a specific energy density of 153 watt hours per kilogram. This is of course quite a bit less energy dense than even the uh, 2170 equipped Model Y, the 2022 version, which has a pack level energy density of around 180 watt hours per kilogram, once again, according to an EPA document. Now, when it comes to the pack level energy density numbers for Tesla's 4680 structural battery pack, based on the cell level energy density numbers that I mentioned previously, and based on a 14% improvement over the September 2020 uh, Tesla battery technology that this uh, structural battery pack is hopefully going to help Tesla achieve. This leads me to believe that the pack level energy density numbers for this Tesla structural battery pack is somewhere around 186 plus watt hours per kilogram. I would like to point out that the reason this matters and the reason why I talk about this so often on this channel is because more energy dense battery packs allow for lighter, more efficient and longer range electric vehicles that should be cheaper to drive because a lighter vehicle should have less tire wear and should be able to go more miles on a kilowatt hour of energy. Beyond energy density, I'd like to now move over to what we know about the cathode chemistry of these battery cells. The 2170 battery cells made at Gigafactory Nevada have a nickel, cobalt, and aluminum cathode chemistry. And while I don't know the exact ratio of these materials in this cathode, I do know for sure based on past information that the cobalt content in these batteries is less than 10%, so it's not an 811 battery cell. However, the first generation 4680 Tesla battery cells, instead of being a nickel cobalt aluminum chemistry, we know from the limiting factor and his analysis of a teardown that he had done that these battery cells 
have a nickel manganese cobalt chemistry and the ratio of these materials is roughly 80% nickel, 10% manganese and 10% cobalt. When it comes to the cathode chemistry of the old CM battery cells, according to my research, they have a nickel cobalt manganese aluminum chemistry and GM has stated quote, the cells use a proprietary low cobalt chemistry. With that being said, based on my research and based on an Inside EVs article, which I will link to in the video description, it appears like the ratio of these cathode materials is as follows, roughly 85% nickel, 5% cobalt, 5% manganese, and 5% aluminum. Nonetheless, while I believe that Tesla will maintain a large lead over GM in the foreseeable future, uh, GM is doing some very exciting things when it comes to electric vehicles and they have a lot of great vehicles that are either available right now or will be available in the near future based on this Ultium platform, like the Hummer EV, the truck and SUV, the Cadillac Lyric, the Chevrolet Equinox EV, the Chevrolet Blazer EV, and the Chevrolet Silverado EV. I'm sure we'll hear about more vehicles in the future based on this Ultium platform. With that being said, please let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. And also, if you work in the battery industry or the automotive industry and you'd like to share insights with me, feel free to email me. My email address is john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt.com. Again, john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt.com. And also, I'd like to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.